Hello everybody and uh, welcome on this stream. I my name is Erika and uh, uh, this stream is going to be on my personal channel because I'm going to do some uh, freelancing for uh, Space Chef by Blue Goo Games. So today's uh, work is going to be hopefully interesting because uh, I'm going to readapt uh, the skeleton from one creature, very big, uh, which is supposed to do uh, walking, eating and so on, to a skeleton with different proportions. First we can have a look maybe at spine so you get an understanding of what we are going to use as base. So here we have uh, the creature that I did uh, several months ago. So it does several things. It has, oh yeah, blinking. Seems like, yeah, it's so as I remember it. And it recently got added to the game, so that's very cool. Uh, so yeah, this is our base. And it has these bones. Now the creature that we are going to add to the skeleton it's going to be very different. Okay, so this is the other creature. As you see, the parts that it has in common is that it has the head more or less in a similar placement. Uh, then it has four legs and uh, it has also a longer tail. Now, regarding the dimensions, that may be a problem. We'll see what we can do. Uh, one of the first things that I want to check is that these uh, parts have similar namings uh, for the various slots. Now, if we go back shortly on spine here, we can see that we have very few slots, which is great because it means that everything is a bit easier to use. So we have leg near, front foot, leg near, front down. Uh, oh yeah, so we have several pieces which make all sense to me for uh, the um, uh, import to work successfully so that I don't have to manually import each slot in the correct place. I'll need to um, rename these so that the slots also match. So now it will be a first part where I make sure that all the pieces match in name. All right, so the next step would be to get everything aligned. But in this case, uh, we don't have a reference. So let's switch back quickly to spine. So it was more or less in the middle. Okay, so its origin, I guess, would be this. And let's see, is this a good placement? Let's check again, spine. Then I'll be using Photoshop to spine now. Okay, skill 100%. I'll write the spine JSON. All right, everything looks good, so I'm gonna export. I'm going to import that file. I'm going to drag and drop it inside it. Okay, Fox images. I have a JSON and I'm going to okay, bring it like this in here. Perfect. Now I don't want a new project. I'm going to attempt this first and see if it works. If it works, it's going to be amazing. Uh, so Fox Adilo, I want to import it into a new skeleton and ignore the existing attachments. Let's import it. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> it's horrible. Skins, we have Lizzie and the fox. Okay, so for the fox, everything was already neat. I just placed it into the wrong <laughs> folder. Let's fix that. Okay, I'll move it to the correct place and you'll see all the images appear. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so this fox is actually much smaller than uh, the rest of the skeleton. So in case I want to actually have this work, I'll need to do some serious uh, uh, reworks. So currently the constraints that we had were just the ones for the legs and for the eye targets. I wonder what I'll be able to reuse. Um, I guess that first of all, I'll have to resize the whole skeleton for it to work. Now what I discovered is that it, is, uh, it pays off to have a bone that is strictly um, devoted to just being the target of all the shenanigans that happen to skins. That's because uh, at runtime you may want to flip the route, for example, 
to reflect the character and that sometimes when I use the skin bones would make things go in all the wrong directions so for that reason I am now containing uh, creating this bone which I'm going to call skin target which is just going to be used as the target of all the stuff that I'm going to move around uh, I guess that the first step will consist for this to work into converting all these images of the fox into meshes so that they won't be affected in case I start moving some parts around because you see now if I move a bone which I should never do in setup mode uh, that wrecks uh, my images so the first step would be certainly that one I also want to merge here the skin placeholders so that they are a bit more organized and they will work better so that's another thing that we need to do okay I guess that only body and head are the same okay so I renamed it to remove fox from those then I'm gonna move this in here so I can just delete the body okay so now they are a mesh and I have to bind them to the correct places yeah I guess I cannot scale the root but I can scale the container now that I think about it I'll bind these to the root and then to the body okay now that those are bound to the root if I move the container around this should work yes so now I can start doing the interesting part so I'd want to scale this down so that it matches the size of this uh, foxadillo I'll create a new transform constraint and this transform constraint shall point to the skin target which is that bone that we are going to leave alone and do nothing to it okay so I'll call this fox scale I have to check from another project how I did that although I believe it was both relative and local and then when I scale this down it should work ah because I have to take the scale to 100% otherwise it doesn't work of course okay so here I can set the new scale let's match the height so first fox scale I'll place it first also make sure I'll have to make sure that this is active only when the fox scale is active because if we change this and we are in setup mode we basically wrecked this poor um, lizard so the way to fix that is to select the fox skin add to skin and then we select fox scale like this now when we change we now have them in different sizes didn't automatically yeah that's probably gonna be best in terms of usage for you it doesn't have a tongue so in this case I believe that I can add this tongue and all the children to the skin Lizzy okay perfect they were added so I have to rearrange the position of these various parts so the position seems uh, the correct kind of motion in proportion but we need to rearrange the place of all these things so I guess that for these bones because they are different I am actually going to create some alternative bones and just reuse the targets then let me double check before I invest too much into this what happens if I change the weights yeah they, it's good okay that puts me at ease so basically uh, despite the fact that all these bones are scaled because they are readapt here uh, if I bind the bones now to um, the new the new images to these bones they are going to know that this is its setup size and they are going to follow this which is perfect for us it's exactly what we want so new transform constraint and then I pick my skin target I'll call it mm, and here is where I have to get all the names right so I use a prefix so I know that it belongs to a certain skin I'll call this fox and then leg far back down 
IK, so I know exactly what is the target of this. And then I'll check local and relative, and then I'll move the translation up, and then start repositioning this bone until it matches where I want it to be next. Okay, so like this. And then I'll create a new transform constraint and select my skin target. So the skin target is going to have a ton of constraints on it. Now here and a bit higher up. Okay, so let's do this one. Copy, then new transform constraint. And we choose a skin target. We call this fox, like for front, etc, etc. Then local relative translation on and then we realign the parts and then new transform constraint we target the skin target we call this fox and then everything else stays the same and then we check local relative uh, translation on and at this point i can move this to the correct place i'm gonna add this to the skin so i select this uh, and now it tells me that these ones also need to be added to a skin. See the warning icon? A lot of people ignore it. Okay, I can select the little skin and then add this too. And now everything is back to being happy. We don't have any warning anymore. Okay, so now this is the result. It doesn't have any bones here anymore. But I can very easily create some new um, bones for it, in which case uh, the fact that we have uh, these uh, uh, parts with different names uh, is not that bad, because uh, it, it means that they're in different slots as they should be. Actually, they could have stayed in the same slot in any case. What am I saying? Yeah. Because then I just need to mesh them and weight them to the correct uh, um, bones that I want to follow and I'm going to create a couple of bones um, just like the pattern bone here's the second one hmm how can we make this more precise I guess I'll make it this way and then I'll parent the images, all these various legs images outside so that they are not following here anymore and then I'll reparent them I'll create a better joint okay. also a better joint here Actually, for this one, I can create straight up a new mesh. Oh, but then it becomes tiny. <laughs> I'll create the outer hull manually and delete the various parts. Okay, next I'll bind this to these bones. So I can stop, for example, here and uh, make sure that the weights are nice. Cut definitely don't want that 1% influence here oh and now it's coming together okay now create the mesh for the body add mesh then the next step will be to bind all these various parts All right, so once I got this, I just have to uh, get also the shell, shell attached. Then I'll need to attach the head, add some bones for the ears, for the tail, and uh, that will be the end of this. Uh, so then I said that I wanted to reparent also the head to the head so I'll update the bindings just in case and then change the influence to the head so now the head should be following without the eyes I guess I can try to do it all in one go so let's see edit the mesh ah 
I'll change the influence. Now you see that the ears are finally attached. Save. Okay, now the eyes are missing and the tail. Not much. I'll need to create a custom tail for that. And add it in all the animations. Yeah, I guess I'll add this transform constraint. So let me copy the name tail up. New transform constraint. I select that skin target that I mentioned in the beginning, where I'm that I'm using as dump for all these repositioning work. Yeah, all that's missing is the eyes at this point. But since it has got a little bit late, I guess I'll stop here for today. But at least you got the gist of most of it. And you saw the challenges that it can pose, uh, the advantages that this kind of workflow can um, offer, which are some pretty big advantages. The drawback is that the list of the constraint becomes pretty long. But there's the advantage that these constraints are only calculated when the skin is active. So as long as the constraints belong each to the skin that needs to have them active, then it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, so thanks again for the company, for those of you that stay with me until now. And I'll see you next time.